Hi guys, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I'm going to be creating the color scheme for my Cypher Lords uh, Warband. And this is a mirror blade. And we're gonna see how it goes. So uh, hopefully you've gotten your models together and your paints together and you are ready to paint with me. Um, now, again, I'm doing this as I go. So I just gathered a whole bunch of paints that I think I could possibly be using uh, on this model today. Just a few dozen. All right, so the first, I know I'm really excited to start with the purple. See, they're going to be purple. Now this purple, I was thinking of using Magos purple, This, but this seems too red-ish. So, what I'm going to do is try out, Here's, this is my tester model, but I will try and do it. And I think what I'm going to do is mix the shyish purple with the apothecary white contrast paints for a lighter purple and see how that goes. But first I have to do the skin and I'm going to use Gilliman Flesh. Gently, because I want them to look very neat. They're assassins and somehow they keep themselves wonderfully tidy. So, let's try this Gilman flesh. And that is going to very neatly uh, go over all of his skin. Now they say, t well I've heard anyway, it should go rather heavy with the contrast paints, but I think if you just control the flow a bit, you can go heavy where you want shadows and less heavy you don't. And of course, you can always highlight some dry brushing or layering afterwards, of course. Nice and neatly. Right, right, and I should show you this miniature. Let's have a look at him. I mean, I know he's supposed to be like in the middle of a combat pose, ready to strike his spear, but I can only see that he's in the middle of a dance pose. I have now nicknamed him the rapper. He's my mirror blade rapper. Uh, by the way, this is a standard brush. Ah, uh, it's out of stink. It's a, uh, it's extinct now. I guess, uh, but any semi-small, you know, this is, compared to the model, this is the size of the brush. Gives you a bit of control, but also allows you to cover a small model like this pretty quickly. So I'm not going to be doing the original color scheme uh, because I really think they would look awesome. Purple and 
haven't painted an army purple yet, so here we are. But I am with Athermatic Blue. I'm going to keep some turquoise in there. I'm thinking in the hair somehow. I mean, I don't know why an assassin would have bright turquoise hair. They're just so good, you never see them until that it's too late. If you haven't used contrast paints yet, and you're wondering how easy they are to use, um, I find them really straightforward. Now, I have had some experience painting models, but you know, if you take your time, they are very forgiving. Oh, uh, also, this one has been sprayed with wraith bone, uh, but there's also a little pot of wraith bone. And if you make a mistake with your contrast paints, and you have done something dark over one of the light pieces by accident, uh, the wraith bone will. All you do is you put a little bit of wraith bone over top that dark spot, and that wraith bone covers it up really well. And then you just put a little bit of the light color back over it and it's like it never happened. Well, that's what I've found thus far. It's worked really nicely and I am shocked by how well uh, the wraith bone covers up dark, uh, dark colors. Just like one layer. Maybe two layers. Wraith bone all fixed. So I've used this brush for most all of the skin, but I think I'm now going to switch to a smaller brush to get his feet and skin between the bands on his legs and arms. I'm going to choose my handy dandy Wargamer Kalinsky Mastercast by Army Painter brush. This one allows you very Good control. Unless you destroy it. But thus far I've been pretty good with that. And thankfully I have learned a few restoring techniques. This Gilliman Fresh Contrast Paint is doing exactly the color that I wanted for their skin. Perfect. All right, now, is that all of the skin? Okay, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Come on, look at the mini. Go. This is what it looks like while it is still wet. See all the skin. Now what's next? With gold now, so it has drying time. And there. Normally I would find a larger brush for this. But there are divots in this gold that I don't want to accidentally overfill. Alright, I'll finish this helmet just so that there's no odd separation in the drawing. But I think I'm actually going to do the top of his that weird crown like thing on the top of his head as I imagine it'll spill a little bit over uh, so I want to paint over it with the gold after it spills over okay this is what it looks like just with the base of Retributor armor on it. Now I am simply 
shiny purple. I think. Let's try it. I'm going to do. Shyish purple with a technical contrast medium because I want it to be the barest amount of purple and the most amount of white actually. So I've got here, that's the contrast medium, and then there is a bit of shyish purple, and I just whirl it around. So it was only tiniest amount of the shyish purple and let's see how that turns out and I'm just going to layer it down in this thing and I think that is exactly what I wanted to happen And that's what happened. And I'll just do the back side of that as well. Same way. Uh, the eye in the middle of his belt buckle. It's going to be gold. And the rim. Where they have it too. Uh, so the gold that, that I'm putting all the gold exactly where they have it on the box. Yes, so okay. Actuality, let's not do the gold. Let's do the silver first because the gold is over top the silver. And yes, I did happen to miss a tiny piece of his flesh hiding right where his shoulder connects. Uh, where his shoulder strap is connecting to the armor. Okay. That's where I'm adding the gold. But I'm going to add the silver before I go any further. And the silver I am adding is chrome. Why in the world would you add chrome, you say? Because I want this to be super shiny, and silver is the most shiniest of shinies. It's not silver, chrome. Chrome is super shiny, and that's what I want. I want them to be shining across the battlefield. They're so shiny. Now, I'll probably reduce it down with a non gloss wash. But let's see. Now, these ones, these Vallejo metals, sometimes uh, they're more watery, more liquid than the regular metal. So, you have to be careful using them, I found. Don't want it to accidentally spill, leak out to uh, another part of your model. So, use it sparingly as you're going has good coverage. You don't need to use a lot. Surprisingly, I'm not regretting my decision to do some of the gold first. Maybe that was a good decision after all. Yep, I can't stress enough. Be very careful with these Vallejo. They are gorgeous. But they might spill. Now, the blade. I'm not going to do the blade chrome. Any of the weapons, yeah, I'm not going to do the chrome. But the armor, and this really big belt buckle, with I, which I guess is actually not really a belt buckle, it's a piece of his armor. What is that? Is that metal on his thing or is that cloth? 
Okay, he's some sort of cloth. Gotcha. All right. I don't know how well you'll be able to see the chrome, but it is on the, his chest armor and shoulder armor. And on the oversized belt buckle. Okay, now I'll finish doing the gold. And for the for this edge here, uh, because I really don't want it to uh, to mess up my pretty little purple there. I'm just scra scraping the edge of my brush at an angle over this metal. Like this. I swear for the slight changes around here, but uh, I did have to do a couple battle reports with Melody, and I needed this guy, so, but we're back. Okay, let's continue where we left off, or for you, a few seconds later. Hmm, I think it is time to do the clothing, the purple. Go for 50 50 and see what that's like. Just a drop each. Oh, um, sorry, these are the contrast paints, uh, but uh, I put them in their own little dropper bottle uh, so that I wouldn't spill them all over the place. Now, let's mix, 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 mix. We are sticking with the half and half apothecary white and shyish purple. And very carefully putting them, putting them, putting it all over, gently, carefully, uh, his clothing, but not his bootstraps or his racer straps. Uh, those ones are going to stay brown, I think. But this uh, standard brush for this, but I think. All at the same time, I'm going to have to use uh, this one, my uh, Glinsky Master Masterclass at the same time, just so I don't accidentally spill onto my skin. No purple skin for him. And why am I only? Why would I use two brushes instead of just start do this smaller brush? I think the coverage is more uniform if I use the bigger brush. And I'm cleaning my brush often because I want fresh contrast paint and not even remotely dried contrast paint. And it does dry quicker, of course, on a smaller brush. You do have to be really careful with these models. Well, if you're planning on doing them as cleanly as as can be, that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. Pristine assassins. Do you have to be really careful? But I think just taking your time and having a nice brush that you can control the paint with very easily will help a lot. And of course, as mentioned. You can go back over it with a wraith bone and fix your mistakes.
All right. All right, let's have a look. Here he is. The next part that I'm going to do is put Sigour Brown on all of his bands. On the feet and legs and arm bands. And I'm just using the brush that gives me a lot of control for this one. Now these ones you have to be very careful and not they're so small, you have to be very careful not to get anything on the skin. I yeah, forgot to put them back on here. This will make it much easier. I do enjoy the look of these cipher lords. They sort of remind me of Romans. With their uh, armor, but mostly bared skin and these little these little boots that they have on, well, sandals. Very, well, definitely reminds me of Roman legionnaires. Though the helmet is definitely unique. If you want to get these done right, without getting their skin covered in the wrong color. You do have to take your time. But I think it's going to be totally worth it. I don't know about you, but sometimes a water droplet will ruin my day. You'll be painting something very carefully and you'll be oh so, pre uh, oh so precise and a water droplet that you didn't notice on the brush will come down and ruin your day. Maybe that was just me. I'm much more careful about water droplets staying on the brush after you clean them. Well, if it does happen to you, don't panic. Just grab a paper towel and push it into the water droplet and remove it as fast as possible. And then take a clean brush that is damp but not wet and uh, clear away whatever mess that you accidentally made. And it should be good. Okay, the Cygore Brown is done. Doesn't look like I have anywhere to fix. This is what it looks like. bit of gold where the silver should be but actually I need to use this silver anyway so that works well for me might need a cup coat but still uh, the, the silver itself is very thin so now uh, the other place I was going to put the silver is on his gemstone in his helmet um, right where the gem is just all over the gem because I'm using it as the metal base for my gemstone effect 
which was uh, the Waystone Green Technical Paint. Chrome seems a bit too bright for the weapon, so what color metal should we use on the weapon? And it also has this, uh, this leather through. Should that be purple, I wonder, as well? And it has a bit of cord. I think the cord I might do. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to use the Aethermatic Contrast Blue Paint on the cord that's just for decoration on the sword and see what it looks like because I was planning on doing their uh, hair um, with that same and I'd like to see what the effect is. not very opaque. Definitely more transparent than I was originally thinking. Here's what it looks like as it's still wet. Right. Right there. It is quite pretty though. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to put it on and I'm going to see what that looks like and adjust it as I want while it's still wet. I don't mind it pooling a bit, but I don't want it to pool a bit, uh, I don't want it to pool too much evenly. So this is a moderate amount on it. This is what it looks like when it's wet. No, I think I like it. Yeah, I think I like that. And now, his weapon. What kind of metal shall we use? I think a bit darker than the chrome, but still pretty light. All right, I picked up duralubinum, and while I was there, I also checked out copper. What would it be like if they were copper? How feasible is a copper weapon? Hmm. I think I shall go with the duralubinum. And maybe use the uh, Chrome as a highlight color. Uh, we can use this one. Yes, that looks good. I'm happy with my choice of duralumin. So I'm just doing the blade and this rod at uh, the back end. Just ever on the sword that looks like it's metal, except for the hilt, which I did with the gold. So there's just the duraluminum added. Stinker, I think I will stick with the uh, Saigor Brown for snake bite leather. No, nope. sticking with the side or brown. Uh, for all that leather on his uh, glaive. So here he is with his leather now. I've got paint on my thumb. Uh, anyway. Use the 
next thing? Ah, yes, the gemstone. So, uh, technical waystone green. I've got a little tiny bead on one half of my brush. I'm putting the half that, uh, on one side of the tip of my brush, putting the other side, the opposite side of the tip of my brush, against the model when I'm painting so that I can really control how much of this blobby is a different, definitely a different uh, consistency than a normal paint. It's more like gel. Right there is that side. And again, having a tiny blob on the, on the bottom of my brush, but I'm using... <clears throat> it only has a blob on one side because I scraped off the other side, and I'm using that other side to control the flow. I don't know if you can really tell what that looks like yet. But there it is, that green gemstone. Okay, now, do I want to wash the gold. I mean, I really like how it looks right now. Except for his helm. Could use a bit more depth. Hmm. What I think I'll do is I will leave it as is paint up the rest of the other ones, play them for a bit, and see if I do want to change them. Because I think I am happy with him as he is right now. What do you think? Here he is. What do you think? Do you think that he's good as is? Or should I continue work on, working on him later? I like him as he is, but maybe he could be improved in home. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting with me today and yesterday. That is my Cypher Lord, and that's what I'm going to paint all the other ones up to be as well, and uh, so they won't be white. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, I know we did another battle report where they're going to still be white uh, with him as the exception, uh, but the next time they'll be more painted, and, and I imagine by the next time uh, I should have them all completely painted going forward and once they face off the other warbands they will be beautiful, absolutely beautiful, in a deadly version. Well, if you'd like to see more painting videos, I will try to get them up more often than this these past couple weeks. I would like to try and get a painting video up every week, I would say. and. Uh, Again, right, if you decided to paint along with me, do tell me what you were working on when you were doing it. I'm very excited to find out what sort of things people are painting as we speak. 
Have a great one.